Right. So, how are you working? Yes. Um, would, you start, would you start off telling us about uh, your uh, your career in my colon, so to speak? I would, um, when you first, first, from under, nice under age. Career in my colon, as the fellow says, once we were able to, to go to play hurling or handball, uh, my father was involved big time, no more than myself. And yeah. uh, we went with him to hurling games, and uh, actually the first All Ireland I went to was a football game, believe it or not, in Crow Park in 1956. Your very first game? Yeah, so that's a, that was our first all Ireland. So that would have been a big occasion. That was, it wouldn't be a big occasion, I suppose. I suppose the biggest occasions was going to all our own local games, really, you know, the hurling games. But that was the most important, the, the local now? Over yeah, the... the local games, your club comes first, really, you know, and I suppose your county comes next. And I always said it like, if you're good enough by your club, your county will then recognise it. And... Uh, some guys has different views. My view would be my club would be first anyway, and I think that's coming is. through. My colour, all right, very strong, all right, with all that. And uh, how about the handball? Out the handball club. Well, is the handball is the same way because uh, the handball is very strong. We started uh, playing handball as a fellas as, as young kids, and uh, I remember I think my first trophy won in handball. I think it has gone back as far as nineteen fifty-five. Was it fifty-five? I think so. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> and how about uh, getting to and from places? And well, that must have I been suppose difficult. At enough. the time, at the time, uh, it was all local. It was uh, the one size court, a sixty by thirty, of which we call a three wall court. And, all right. Uh, we had one in my column. We had one in Ligon, which is refurbished, and there was one in Tullycoyne as well. And they also had one in Berna, but we never went to Berna. We had three courts ourselves, fortunate enough, in my column. And then when the handball took up, we say at that stage. When it came to maybe 15, 16, 17, you were constantly playing hurling and playing football then. So the handball kind of came third, came, if you want. Came if you, last. Yes, yes. But set you up but, well for the hurling yes, and the football. Yes, that's correct. And uh, then in later years, uh, once we finished with the hurling and football, we came back again. But of course, then again, I was involved in refereeing, so... And tell us about the refereeing now. When, when did you begin that now? Well, I suppose, realistically, I started refereeing, I suppose, going back as far back as before Morgans and Fergal and Tom Tom, who was involved tomorrow, uh, before their time. Because I was involved until the 14th. And like, I suppose, the Morgan and Fergal and Tom Tom, they're pushing on 40 years of age now, so... <laughs> <laughs> and then I went on to, I suppose, at that stage, I was, I was enjoying it. And then, uh, fortunately enough, I got onto the inter-county panel, so I stuck that in for a number of years. Oh, brilliant. Oh, you'd have to show us now some of the show, some of these medals now and explain which ones are. Actually, uh, this one here, I suppose, your dad and yourself would be proud out of it. That was uh, the medal that we were given the day, the All Ireland final between Kilkenny and Clare, which Clare won. Oh, right. And that was the very beginning of Gerlach Nan and Mike Mack and Tony Considine. The big, the big, the big three. Big three. All right. That was right. A success when they went down to senior. So we were presented, the referees presented with the same medal as the winners. I didn't know that, no. It's a, it's a gold medal as well. So you have all the other medals here, as you can see, I think they're all All-Ireland handball medals, so they are. These are handball now. Yeah, you have handball winners, runners-up and winners, you know. No, there's numerous oh, right. conic medals as well. I have about 26 or something conic medals, but there's no time to put them all on. <laughs> <laughs> they're lovely decorated yeah, medals now. Another one here is this one here. This is the... As you know about the Shinty. Aye, yes. So uh, we went to Scotland. Uh, there was three referees. That's rare enough now. Yeah, there was three referees selected to go. Terence Murray, myself and Pat Horden from Offaly. Hmm. That was in 93. And each referee was presented with a replica of the Winners' Cup. So it's a nice thing to have, you know. It is, then that's something now most people wouldn't know. Yeah, that's true. So it was nice, a nice thing to get, like, you know. So it was... Uh, these other ones, I suppose, this is the latest one that came from the US this, this morning. And you're just back from, from yeah, America? That's right. You have to tell us now about America. How, how did this go on and uh, tell us about this trophy? I suppose in America it's, it's fantastic. I love going to the States to play handball really because it's enjoyable. It's, I enjoy the game anyway. And you meet so many friends. Actually, strangely enough, I met a guy over there that we played against 18 years ago in a world title. Stop. World Championship title, myself and Bert Keelan. Unfortunately, they, they beat us, but uh, it was a very good game the same year, 21-19, uh, 19-21, on the tiebreaker. So he was delighted to see me. I was delighted to meet him as well. So uh, we had a great chat, and he's coming home again next year. But and uh, the American competition. 
Is it, uh, is it strong? It is strong, but the Irish seem to be the stronger now at the moment, especially at underage and we say at senior level. We say the likes of Paul Brady and all these guys, they're, they're still dam- dictating the handball to the American guys all the time. Mm. But uh, I suppose maybe there's more structure done here in Ireland for the young guys than America. I don't know. I don't know. Coming up through, yeah. the, through the ranks, just like the new building that's been that's right. down that's and right. down the pitch. And hopefully we'll have another one or two there shortly as well. <laughs> Brilliant. And how, how do you think now the lads are going to get on tomorrow? I am looking forward to tomorrow because actually I was away, as you know, and I only got back this morning. And the first thing I had to do on my way out in Philadelphia was change my ticket to see if I could get back on Friday. That's dedication. So uh, I was to come back on Monday, Monday, the, yeah, Monday the 31st, we were to leave there. And then I said I can't miss the game. So, uh, <laughs> so then I had to change my ticket and... Uh, <laughs> I said, I, I said when I was changing my ticket, I said, I hope these guys will win this game. But it, look, it's only a joke. I was serious about it. I had to get home for the game. And I'm really looking forward to it. The first time ever I saw my Colin, if you want to put it bluntly, is to have bottled this year, mm. which they never had before. Really? Yeah. They see every one of them, from 1 to 30, every one of them. I mean, that goes for the whole lot of them. I mean, before there were nice guys. Nice guys don't win county titles. Nice guys don't win all You have to be, you have to be a bit mean, hmm. in a nice way. Like the '64 team. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. But the game has changed dramatically since '64. Naturally, the game is faster, uh, lighter balls, faster, newer hurries, lighter New equipment. Hurries, you know, good equipment. You know, good equipment. And that's good. And that's good. But uh, my so, belief, and I have no doubt in the world that Mike Connor will win tomorrow. That's brilliant. And how, do you, how would you compare now the 64 team to, to tomorrow's team? Well, suppose, if you were to fought one, one another against, against each other well, tomorrow now. I suppose, now. yeah. And realistically now we say the 64 team and tomorrow's team, I suppose maybe age like age difference, there'd be a bit of a difference, all right, an age difference. I mean, the average age, I think, of tomorrow's team is about 22, 23 years of age, which yes. is pretty good. The average team of the 64 team, would probably about maybe 27, 28, 29. Much older team. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they would be, yeah. But still, it's young. Still yes, young, yes, you know. of course. And maybe older. Some of them could be older. You know. And how about the support now? You're seeing big, uh, big support, my Cullen, coming up I now the last few weeks. And uh, the thing is, I think there's huge support in my Cullen for Hurling. Mm. Huge support. And the day has come that thankfully we'll win one tomorrow. <laughs> that will that will bring the the real the, the true blues out like you know and uh, as I said before, uh, by Colin Hurling wanted to win, like the likes of Tom Tom Morgan and Fergal and just picking out them three now, like they're heavily involved in it and uh, they were there from day Morgan started training from day one and then he got involved with Tom Tom and Fergal and begged them to come back. It's great, it's great to see guys like that because they have been down the road, done that, got the results. And they're talking to guys just a few years younger than themselves. Mm. Like Morgan, as you know, is still involved in the game himself. And uh, like them guys, all them guys is near there. They all have won minor titles. They've won the 21 titles, won the 16, won the 14. All the way through. All the way through. So now they have to get, they have to get the big one. And they need it's it. It's coming tomorrow. Mm. And they need it. So. That's, that's, that's really Now you have to show us now some more of these things. Now. What's, what's that's, this here? That's the, la- the latest one this year, I think, is the 2011. That's, uh, that's the World Championships, which is ran in Brafey House every year. And uh, now compliments from Brafey House. They give us that uh, the, the hotel. There's five one ball courts in it. Yes. And uh, actually, they're from New Zealand. They're from the oh, States. Oh, worldwide. Uh, yeah, all over the world. Oh, jeez, I didn't that's, know this now. That's how popular it's gone now. There was over 500 and something entries for it this year alone. Really? Yeah. Jeez, now that's that's now a bit of information more people wouldn't Bullies know. Handball, you know, so uh, it's getting very, very strong, you know. And uh, Going international. And that's, I think that's last year's one. If there's a law. And this one here. Great that's, sponsorship. They were from 94. One of them, that's, the, that's I think that's the runners. It's written on it. I think it's a runners up or uh, winners. Let me see now. I'll try to get. Oh, it does. It does say it right. It says. Oh, it's in this side. Right. It says Waterford Crystal Hurling Handball Championships finalist 1994. That's right. That's and, brilliant. And that was the runner-up, and that was the plate winner of the same year. So you played. I was playing two divisions, so I won one, and and a, a consolation, and a runner-up on the other one. And these ones here are all. They're all won walls as well. Yes. Back through the years, and this one here is. They're lovely from, cups now. 
That's from the US as well. That's a pretty heavy one there, you can see. Oh, jeez, eh? That's from Silver Green Tournament in nine. It's about four 20, years ago. 2007, Silver yeah, Green, yes. Yeah. The US right. Open of Handball. Yeah. My God. And uh, you have to tell us now a bit more about your uh, your refereeing career now as as, as a different take on uh, on the sport because most well, people wouldn't take no I suppose take too kindly to the ref you know they wouldn't know really but the thing about it is <laughs> as I always said it and it's been preached to me myself time and time again when I'm even playing handball if I, if a referee makes a bad call and I suppose realistically I hate a bad call to be made and I hated to make it myself mm. but what can you do you make a split decision but like a bad call is terrible. But uh, a mistake in a call is not as bad. And uh, I think myself, like even I, I did make mistakes. We all made mistakes, of course. And uh, but what I found in the refereeing uh, caliber myself was that you made great friends. The same as hurling, the same as playing, the same as whatever. But you made fantastic friends, and I still meet all these guys to this day. You know, and. Strangely enough, when uh, I gave up the refereeing, my son-in-law, Alan Kelly, who you know, he's a referee now, mm -hmm. and he's on the inter-county level, he's on the top level now at the moment, and uh, I'm still caught up with him all the time. <laughs> I thought he was finished, now I'm going along to an umpire with him. But <laughs> I remember the first time uh, I saw him hurling, and uh, he wasn't too long married to Alan at the time, and the next thing was, I said, uh, Alan, you'll never make a hurl. And Alan said, why do you say that, Dad? Don't say that to him. And Alan, I said, you'll never make a horror. You haven't a clue. <laughs> but I said, do you know what you do? I said, get a whistle. So, there's always, there's always he, was position. Highly, he was highly offended when I said that. Yeah. But to this day, he'll always repeat it. <laughs> he has no regrets. And he has no regrets, you know, so isn't, isn't, it's a great move. Wouldn't you agree now if that hurling would be a sport that everyone could get involved in? That is community? true, that is true. From player to oh, sporter, yeah, sure, and sure. right through. <coughs> exactly. Everyone everyone has a spot to do. Everybody has a spot, it's right, yeah. If, even if it's just cleaning, cleaning jerseys or... Well, that is true. Lining yeah. the pitch. Yeah. Well, it's true, like, uh, I remember the Lord to missing my mum, like, she always had a line of jerseys out in the back yard there. Like, years ago, there was no wash to it. Yes. You know, she did them for a few weeks, somebody else did them for another few weeks, you know, whatever. But that was the only way you did it. And uh, as I said, like, I remember when one of the occasions actually today when some Callan said to me about your dad coming down. I said, I remember the first time I got a Harley above my Collins school. The old FCA barracks was there, and uh, the FCA used to use it. There was an FCA barracks in my Collins? Yeah, that's right. They, they were there beside where the school is at the moment. There's really? a big hall, you know. And I remember we used to go over there and having a chat with the lads and as a fellow says, God bless him, Joe Young, Jack Cassan, they're still going strong. And I remember distinctly one day going into the office, talking to them, during lunch break, you know, they were there in the office, as we call them, Captain Cassan and Captain Young, that's what, that, that's what they were, that was their they're title, title, you know. And I remember looking in at the corner, there was a few hurlies and my eyes nearly fell out of my head, you know. <laughs> But Jack Cassan, being Jack Cassan, was so quick. Jack says, uh, I see you're a guy that likes the horn. And I said, I do, yes, I do. He said, would you like one of them? And I nearly collapsed when he said it. And uh, I said, to take with me? Yeah. He says, you can, but don't tell anybody else. Now, we're just having a chat. When you finish school, come sail over here. And you've never seen a guy to leg it as fast from my college school <laughs> down here with that horn. <laughs> That's all where it was to get a That's right. Get a hurl. Well, to see people had money, Dylan, to buy hurlies, you know. Mm. And it was so hard to get them and I remember a holly that was something like two and six in the old money. <laughs> Which would be what? Two and six would be about I suppose twelve, thirteen pence now. Really? Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so uh, that and, was and the lads the old nowadays just get them thrown at them. That's correct. That's how, how things have moved on. Now, yeah. Like we hadn't, uh, you had no, well, you had gear, but you minded it. You minded it. Now they get a pair of socks and they get togs and they get tops. And I think sometimes they get too much. And in, not in a bad way, but I think they do. And to appreciate actually, it. I was only talking to one of the lads about tomorrow. One of the, one of the players, as the guy says, will leave him nameless. And I, said, <laughs> I think that's best. Just today, I said, uh, "Are you getting? Have you gear got for tomorrow? Whatever." He said, "No, no, no, no. All we have 
We're waiting to hear we have. He says, we're getting a new top, this new top to brought out with some sponsor here, I think. I think this Tim Bowen is at the... Oh, right, yes. You know, yeah. and that's what they got. He said, uh, when we get to the all Ireland, please, God, maybe. <laughs> we, we, we play the match first. That's right. That is true. That is true. I mean, uh, talk victory after it. That's true. That's true. You can talk after it. That's, that's, right. that's the, that's the same. Another, another thing here in front of you that is, um, as you can notice, it was a silver jubilee from 1968 to 1993 where they peaked an Inter Ferrum All Star team. Jeez, and that's a rare piece. No. Fortunately no. enough, I was I made it, and uh, you had players of the caliber on that team of. Dermot Collins, who was uh, David Collins' father. Liam Craven, who was a Calamar Daily man. Uh, John Daly, another Calamar Daily man, was on it. Uh, I think, who else is I don't know. <coughs> Jerry Curtin from Kinvara. And got me with Pat Horney, the drowned. He was a policeman. He, he was on that team as well. He was from Torlock Moor, good horror. Jerry Holland was on it from Torlock Moor. Um, Oh, I don't know. Like, when it came out of the time, the teams, like, you had some fantastic teams in, mm. in the Inter And I couldn't believe it when I got a letter in the post that you were selected on the team. That's, that's something else you now. It was great, you know. <coughs> fantastic. And this one, this award here, I suppose, I, I cherish that one because that was in 1998 from the US Open in, in, in the States. In California as well. And was that by one of the, the earlier ones now? That was in 98. No, well, that wouldn't be one of the earlier. I was there before that, but I... Oh, I, I, I that's, that's a nice place. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's nice, you know. So, as the fellow says, it's nice to get these things, you know. And, of course. And as I often said to even the kids, I said, winning is not everything. It's nice to take part. And uh, it's it's good, like, you know. As the fellow says, we're at it all our life and do it for years and years. But you go back, I go back to the handball situation where our own league on alley... As you know, we did it up there recently, and uh, Parik Davins and his dad. That was one request he made. Could we do it up, you know? And uh, we said we'll do it. So we did. So it's all done now for the kids, and we played there ourselves, <laughs> and, you know. So it's good, you know. It's still being used, you know. That's that's what I know. I'm gonna finish now with the um, a few words now for the lads tomorrow. Well, all I can say is I wish them sincerely the best of luck, the whole lot of them, and uh, they're old enough. But they're still young, but uh, their head, their feet is on the ground, and their head is on their shoulders. I remember talking to your own brother after the one against uh, Kilimer, and uh, he said to me, and he in the dressing room, he says, two more. And I just hit him into the chest with my fist, and I said, Rasa, one at a time. <laughs> and he looked at me, you're right, he said. <laughs> what I can say again is, I uh, wish them sincerely the very, very best of luck, and I have no doubt they will be successful. Brilliant. Excellent. Thanks very much.